God is not just simply the creator and the sustainer of everything that we see. God is also a divine artist. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. If we are aware of our breathing, it will impact our health. So for example, the research shows that people who are intentional breathers, that is meditators, uh, tend to age more gracefully. So for example, it's been shown with experienced meditators that the caps on the end of their chromosomes, the, the, the tips that affect how our cells age, are preserved for people who intentionally breathe. Uh, these caps are called telomeres, and they're like the caps on the end of our shoelaces. They protect the part of our chromosomes that affect cell aging. And so if we're aware of breath and breathe intentionally, we can actually slow and in some cases reverse the aging process. I'm a very easily distracted kind of person, so at any given time I can feel like there are a hundred and 26 monkeys jumping around in my head. And so, um, as part of a pilgrimage to the holy places of Ireland, to the monasteries, I learned about a way of life called a rule of life that included meditation. And so each morning, I take some time to breathe deeply in through my nose and exhale slowly. I breathe in slowly, exhale. And this has a way of calming me and centering me and making me more aware of the Lord. I live here in uh, Vancouver, not far from the ocean, and I love being on the water, whether it's kayaking or uh, sailing on a friend's boat. And there have been times when I've been out at sea and I have seen salmon jumping out of the water at a 45 degree angle. There have been rare occasions when I've seen pods of dolphins or whales in the distance. And there are times when I am breathing deeply in God's presence, meditating, and I feel surrounded by the beautiful mystery that upholds the whole world and me. Uh, there have also been times when I've been out at sea and I've seen debris on the water or maybe an empty Coke can or a styrofoam cup bobbing up and down. And there have been times when I've been breathing deeply in the Lord's presence in meditation and anxiety rises up within me. Uh, maybe a feeling of envy or anger or a painful memory. And I lift these up to the Lord in prayer and I feel free of them, I feel lighter. And so this simple practice of intentional breathing and meditation has a powerful way of shaping my life and my soul. Well, I know that the breath of God is really the breath of peace. And so uh, if I feel tight or anxious, I will simply breathe in the breath of God, the Spirit of God, the Ruach of God, and breathe out my anxiety, my concerns, my heaviness, any gray mist, so to speak. And so the breath of God has filled me with a greater peace. The stories uh, told of uh, a little fish who's swimming down a river and comes into the ocean and approaches a big fish and says, excuse me, Mr. Big Fish, can you tell me where the ocean is? And the, the big fish says, you're, you're in it. And the little fish says, this? I'm just in water and disappointed swims away. Well, as a fish is surrounded by water, whether in a lake or an ocean, so we are surrounded by the very breath of God, but often we're not aware of it. And uh, we're paying attention perhaps to a dark spirit, a dark kind of atmosphere from evil, but we can breathe in the very life-giving breath of God at any time because God is with us and around us all the time. From the very beginning of creation, we uh, read in Genesis that uh, Adam was formed by God, but was just a body apparently until the breath of God entered him then he became a living being. And so there is something about God's breath and our breath, our life, that creates beauty. 
and God spoke, he breathed, and he called the earth and the heavens and the solar system into existence. And as we breathe and take in the very breath of God, we can co-create with God through acts of creativity and artistry. And when we see something beautiful that God has created, when we breathe, we're more present. Uh, brain uh, rushes uh, to our brain and we're more present to the wonder of, of creation through breath. We know that the creative part of our brain uh, works better when we're in a relaxed state. And so uh, sometimes if we take a nap or take a shower or simply take time to breathe deeply, uh, we can relax and the dendritic spines in our brain actually have greater leeway to access different parts of our brain. And so when we are breathing deeply and relaxing, we're actually more creative. When I think about the holiness of God, I think of God as perfection, as being set apart, as being completely pure. I also sense that when I'm in the presence of a holy God, I feel both a combination of conviction. Uh, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin, but also a profound sense that I am deeply loved by my maker. I love spending time outdoors. And so when I'm out on the water, and I see the, the sun glistening, orange, gold, on the surface, or uh, I see a, a hummingbird's flutter uh, its wings as it comes to our hummingbird feeder in our backyard, or if I see an eagle soaring in the air, I am taken by these gorgeous expressions of God's creation, and so I am overcome with a sense of God's creativity, holiness, and love in those moments. So in my meditation, I will close my eyes and I will breathe in deeply through my nose and then exhale slowly. Breathing in deeply. Exhale slowly. And because my mind is so prone to wander, I'll often use a word to help center me, a sacred word like love, my mind wanders, I'll simply say love to help me recenter on God and God's love. Or I might use a phrase like, fill me with your spirit, Lord, as I breathe in. And then I exhale whatever I want to release. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. And then release the anxiety or heaviness or whatever it is I need to let go of. When we breathe in, intentionally through our nose and then exhale. It helps to generate serotonin and dopamine in our brain, nitric oxide. And uh, these are brain chemicals that literally help to calm us and give us a feeling of pleasure. And when we breathe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of joy. And so as we experience pleasure through our physiological senses, we can also experience the joy of the Spirit as we breathe in the very source of joy, God's own breath. The Holy Spirit is at work in the world in all kinds of ways, but certainly every time someone comes to see the wonder of Jesus Christ as the unique Son of God, the Spirit is clearly at work. So I'm in a conversation with someone right now who I grew up in a family without a lot of money, but he was good at sports. And he thought, if I can only become a pro athlete, that might be the answer for me. So he becomes a professional athlete with one of our Vancouver professional sports teams, but that's not the answer for him. He retires from pro sports, goes into business, becomes a fabulously successful investor. He's making tons of money, but that's not the answer. He explores all kinds of pleasures, but it leaves him emptier and emptier. 
and he recently told me that I am just beginning a relationship with Jesus Christ and I now know a joy that I've never known before. That is the Holy Spirit at work. Whenever someone becomes awakened to the wonder of Jesus, that's a sign of the Spirit's work. So we're taught in scripture that through Adam, we inherited a kind of sin nature. So the Apostle Paul talks about this in the book of Romans. So we might say on a spiritual genetic level, we inherit sin, a sin nature from Adam. But when we join our life to Jesus Christ, the second Adam, we inherit a kind of spirit of holiness, a spirit of purity, the spirit of God. You know, scripture tells us that he, that is Jesus, who knew no sin became sin for us, that through him we might become the righteousness of God. And so on the cross, Jesus is engaging in a kind of exchange, taking our place. And as he gives up his last breath and dies on the cross for our sins, in a mysterious way, we are therefore able to take the very breath of God and come to life spiritually. As he dies, we become alive. It's interesting that after Jesus is resurrected from the dead that first Easter, he meets with his disciples in that, in that room and he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And spirit and breath, those words can be used interchangeably. And so as Jesus is breathing on his disciples, the very breath of God, he is giving them the Holy Spirit because the Spirit is the breath of God. And so as we receive the Holy Spirit, we're really receiving the very breath of God. Throughout scripture, we see instances where people receive the Holy Spirit and so even someone like Samson, who had a lot of flaws, as the Spirit come on him and it's manifest in physical strength. Uh, in uh, what we call the New Testament part of the Bible, there are times when we read about the Spirit coming upon someone like Jesus in, in a special way. But Jesus promised that at some point after his death, the Holy Spirit would be made available to all. And so on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit falls on a large group of people and um, it's manifest, the Spirit is manifest in people being able to speak different languages. And that is the sign that right now, the Holy Spirit is available to all who will call upon the name of Christ. The Spirit is available to you and to me. Some people feel that a meditation or a breathing exercise that uh, lifts one up is self-indulgent, it's, it's self-centered. But according to Dr. Hilary McBride, a friend of mine who is a clinical counselor with a PhD from UBC in psychology, if you meditate 15 to 20 minutes a day over four to six weeks, and then a disabled person walks into the room, you'll be like a hundred times more likely to respond to that person. And as we meditate and breathe deeply in the presence of a loving, compassionate God, we will grow more loving and compassionate. A friend of mine once uh, asked Mother Teresa in India, how do you keep going in your work of compassion for the poor, day in, day out, year in, year out? And, and Mother Teresa said, we do our work with Jesus, for Jesus and to Jesus. And she also said that we have this prayer rhythm that enables us to receive the breath of God, the Spirit of God, which empowers us for our service. Before we do a work for God, we need to receive a work from God through the Holy Spirit. And that can happen as we sit and receive the breath of God in prayer. God is not just simply the creator and the sustainer of everything that we see. God is also a divine artist. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. 